you know i think i was asked a question in my interview and in, for my masters you know who's your favorite artist the standard questions and i basically i remember in the essay i had written uh, uh, walt disney because i think uh, walt disney as an artist i i i think of him as an artist and he is an artist basically and in a way he he did everything uh to you know scale up Mm-hmm. you know it's not just a comic anymore it's not just a character it's not just animation anymore it's become a brand it's mm-hmm. become large it's become mm-hmm. an empire you know in mm-hmm. fact it has collaborations and w- half the films you see in animation sector are all from Walt Disney right it's it's mm-hmm. it's disney you have disney plus now so this guy's yeah. in a way what started so many years ago has opened up its wings you know and it's become a phoenix mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. it's is it's that kind of it's that kind of uh, vision that an artist should also imagine to take and if an artist mm-hmm. had to think that way you need an ecosystem mm-hmm. to think that way now i'm sure yeah. that walt disney not the walt disney but disney right mm-hmm. the com- the company ha- mm-hmm. had had to define its boundaries as to what do we do we make family content we make you know so animation we do this kind of content you know an illustrator for example or a musician when he mm-hmm. or she is is making music they need to be like there's no it's they don't even have the words sometimes to kind of mm-hmm. you know figure so who do they have this conversation with i mean you took the example of Biz, uh, of uh, of disney um i would say that they did a great job of being a business like you know they they branded themselves they operated on the level of the business but like you said the first thing that they did is uh, maybe think about who are they doing this for like who's their audience like you said they said they really didn't have boundaries is this for family is this for children is this an animation is this when they when you're doing that you're thinking about who's watching you or you know and you're creating value from there yeah. so disney was like maybe you know you took that example but um, anybody talking about who do you want to do this for for children okay what does that mean what are, what are, what is it that you know um this is something that uh, a lot of brands do is find a need gap you know find a need gap mm. in what is happening out there in the world and what is missing in say somebody's experience of it so companies like disney really know how to spot a need gap or a, or a white space as say, as brands call it there where 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 there are where which is full of opportunity and if there is creative space in industry it is in that white space in that need gap yeah well, where you are free to do whatever it is you want because yeah. nobody else is going to do is occupying that space yeah. so it's a lot again you know it's very different from say somebody saying that oh these these you know animations are popular with children so i'm going to try and replicate them yeah as opposed to saying that these are popular so i should stay the hell away from that yeah and do something different so everywhere i feel like the common denominator is just not doing what somebody else is and figuring out what they can learn from that to do something different of your own and having that crazy amount of conviction that what you are offering does have value and that value is not coming from other people it's not coming from the outside it is there is nobody else creating value except for yourself so as an artist if you see value in your work you know and you you with conviction you're taking that out there there's no way that you wouldn't make money i know that there are artists out there who do make money significantly am i right like artists there are artists yeah. that do make money yeah, so that yeah. archetype of like the artist that is not making money is very different from the one that definitely exists which is the artist that does make money you're you're right about that i so, kind of uh, i kind of overstretch yeah. the artist not making money artists are making money what i meant is the percentage of artists yeah. out there uh yeah. for a country like india is very small the kind of the kind of I agree with you and that is yeah. the problem the problem is that the problem is that some of my friends are not in the field anymore <laughs> <laughs> and right. it it pains me it, but i mean the true with businesses i'm sure you have friends who started businesses and they're not in that business anymore and they wrapped up that idea so the businesses that are doing really well are that, also following the same principle is true. that you know they are doing something different and they have insane amounts of confidence and conviction 
that's what like you talk about the people who succeeded but you don't talk about the people who failed there are more failed businesses and failed corporate ideas and brands uh-huh. that exist than the ones that have succeeded so, so uh, there's a lot i mean everybody who's successful is just i don't know like yeah. is focusing on that differentiating You're factor don't me. don't replicate i guess like an age old thing you are asking me to change my attitude altogether at how i see artists because yeah maybe you're right you know i look at artists like depressed and like uh, you know the victim always and maybe that's my my bias my 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 shortcoming right yeah, yeah. maybe yeah cuz no i know quite, and, i know, and I know quite a few for every artist i know quite a few yeah. successful artists too and i'm not latching on to that in my mind i'm latching on to the 95% who who've not made it it just it hurts me on a personal level which is why i bring it up right it's <laughs> right. like it's like you know if your friend but i mean it's not if your yeah. friends are not in the field anymore and you knew they were talented it's just they couldn't then yeah. there's not enough opportunity i, I understand right. i mean you're saying that businesses go through the exact same thing and it's unemotional and there's no need to be emotional about it i think it's a not being emotional is somewhat of a superpower i as a very emotional person i'm saying that that you know sometimes uh if you are a bit uh cut off from say the end outcome or oh, something didn't work out and this is something i guess can you apply to life like you know it doesn't have to be your artists and business people, but uh business people uh but uh you know it's just something that you again it comes down to that thing of like not being very rigid uh is that you don't define yourself as an artist i am a successful artist only if this happens or i am a successful business if this happens nobody in the business world who's successful is doing that no brand is doing that either um in fact you know people like cred for example uh yeah. brands like cred yeah. they don't care about what their numbers are they don't care about what their valuation is they want to be cool they want to be popular brands like i mean brands as in like, you know platforms like facebook started with that idea also Yeah. So any successful business you see out there perhaps started on an emotional um built on an emotion that they wanted to connect with other people on and so I know that companies like Cred spend so much money on the advertising and you know creative advertising so there are a whole bunch of creative individuals working there yeah who are not only making the money but also having the creative freedom to um you know find that need gap and find the right yeah. business to work with the right business structure to work with yeah and overall just have a, have a happy life you know in yeah. the art world there's a channel like this that is following this exact same ethos it's called art history plus mm. you should subscribe <laughs> <laughs> you should subscribe to art history plus it follows i for sure i have another question for you a quick question yes uh yeah it might come across as a little cheeky but you know uh you're a qualitative researcher okay now i want to ask you if you know is your process of research absolutely necessary or can oh. can i wing it oh um can i can i can i be can i be can i be organically doing my job or yeah do why do brands like what are you how are you helping a brand save time go correct like you know it's like I, like can i wing it without research can i can i operate in a can i be an artist without yeah. knowing my my environment and just you know what what is the advice you would give artists who are who are kind of winging it who are not actually studying their ecosystem understanding mm. what is the landscape they operate in how should how should i package this this if if somebody asks me you know what you do okay Yeah. If someone asked me and el- my elevator pitch as an artist. Yeah. Right? Like what should an artist be think, like? It's like I don't think artists can give or should give elevator pitches, you know. Elevator pitches are like the lowest form of uh <laughs> trying to sell something. So the elevator pitch I feel like is is now an old concept and an artist so should never go close to an elevator pitch. I'll tell you why. Um when you say package something or when you'd called um, you know art is so mysterious and all that i wouldn't agree with you like the way that uh, you know people sort of people mystify soaps also you know soaps also have a very mysterious quality you see half of the advertising out there they'll have these all all these codes which say kya hai raz what is the secret this beautiful world you know um 
Yeah, art is not mysterious. I, I feel like art is more clear than half of like commercials that exist out there or half of the things that are being sold um, to people. So really, it's just that artists seem to not believe that you know art is very clear what? and very or can has has the potential to be very organized. Also, is that is that true? Like, do artists not believe this? You're completely challenging me again on a fundamental level. Like, I I never saw it that way. I always. I always played the victim as an artist but you're telling me something so fresh you you're saying that a soap is mysterious like they try to make they, they make soap mysterious is art mysterious is art really mysterious not is it me. intentionally mysterious no not for me i get it like i because and it comes with communication because the communication with me with art the, the communication between me and other artists is clear so mm. i kind of get it i get the root of it you know i've peeled the onion enough in my professional life you know i make films for i i interview yeah. artists professionally and i i make films on them so i ask them yeah. the questions i ask them the right questions so i get it my job is to translate that knowledge to a larger audience right, right. so so you are essentially doing what a what a qualitative researcher does for their clients and i want to get better at it so which is why i'm asking so like i ask my i ask most of the artists you know uh, what were you as a child like and i, I keep get, i i kind of like i try to peel the onion is that something that even you do yes in qual research i mean specifically in qualitative research it's not just about you know the numbers like you said that you try and understand literally the psyche of the person but from a very uh, socio cultural perspective who are they really okay so who is your audience you don't you don't reduce them to a demographic you reduce them to who they really are so we ask them a lot about you know their childhood where they grew up what their desires are what their dreams are what their unfulfilled dreams are as well and we also ask them very um, a sort of questions that hit at the subliminal so we ask them questions like um if the color red was a, was a scent what scent would it be or if you think of golden what are the different kinds of objects that if you think of the color golden what are the different objects that come to your mind or you know um yeah. what is it that makes anything mysterious so we are never defining it ourselves it's never it's never going from us to the consumer it's always coming from the consumer to us to us and so yeah it's reverse and so i mean we ask them a lot of questions that sort of forces them to go to the bottom of something that they otherwise in their daily life are not coming across like um you know we, we about and and about the randomness of um, objects we could even ask like somebody that if if uh, an alien comes from mars to your house and it asks what that soap is what yeah. would you tell them how would you define a soap to an alien to an alien you know because that, to an alien yeah because then what they're doing is that they're forgetting anything and everything that they know about what a soap is and you get to hear what this person thinks of uh, or how they define soap without any of your prejudices so it's like you can never go into the field with a with a so definition or construct you're yeah. you're saying alien as ethnographer <laughs> yeah yeah they ask the question that if an alien comes and just just walks around and questions each and everything that they see yeah um yeah like what is that uh, why is it what would they think of it so you can ask that about art as well something as yeah how would you explain art to an alien how if a martian comes how would you explain the works of say mf hussein or like how do you explain works of um the 10 other artists like picasso whatever like the guy will yeah, have to or, the guy the, the alien i'm assuming the alien who's made that journey would have to do a lot of reading and a lot of context uh, to understand would they would they is that always required if that is the demand that artwork is making then it's going to be very difficult to brand no to explain know, how do i you're, you're asking me how do i explain art to an alien yeah someone who has what no is, clue what is that but isn't that yeah. isn't that like me explaining what my art is to any random person who doesn't know what art is because it's the same random thing random people <laughs> the, i mean the, random people the, will carry some uh, prejudices how, about art in the that's how i see you as an alien that's what i'm trying to get at is that when yeah. i try to explain my art to you yeah i 
it's the same thing it's trying to explain it to an alien because somehow uh, you it, it, or maybe i'm the alien i don't belong there it's like, you, I, I think to... you make a good alien <laughs> no i i totally get your point okay wait let me let's do this. Let, let me let me do this let me you're saying yeah. that if an alien yeah. if i had to explain a painting to an alien yeah how would i explain art or a, a, a certain kind of that's why i started art history plus art I, explained so that you know yeah. so that they get it one artwork at a time but okay we just saying how yeah. how would can you give me an example of like if if for example i'm i'm can i counter question you can i ask you if you had yeah, yeah, yeah. if you had to sell soap to an alien how would mm. you what what if you know how would i you wouldn't explain? i wouldn't am i selling the soap to them or am i just defining explain, the soap defining. like if am, you, I, am i am yeah. i telling the alien hey this is so yeah. this is what it does yeah uh this is why we use it this is why you need it yeah this is what is in your life yeah. so i would tell the alien that um do you know the concept of uh, germs and dirt do you know that there are these things that so you know that's a, what a lot of brands what they do is educate the consumer ki, hey here's a need that you didn't know yeah and that's something that you like an artist can also do hey here's some here's some thoughts that you've never thought but what if the here's alien some... has no concept yeah. of hygiene and germs yeah so then you 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 are in trouble yeah <laughs> no that's what There's i'm getting at which is, yeah. Which, which, yeah. which is why yeah. i'm trying to sell some i'm trying to explain a very emotional personal narrative or a, you know an idea yeah. to to hmm. somebody outside of me and that other person is an alien instantaneously So yeah. the, but the, the spontaneously, co- what would you do? The first thing that you would do when somebody is so alien to your context, uh, what is the first thing that you do when you're explaining to a child, for example, somebody who's two years old? Please tell and me. And you're you're explaining the color red, for I, example. I don't know the answer. Uh, Can you please tell yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, I don't know the answer either. But this is just this yeah. is just like yeah, yeah, okay. debates about debates about how the first thing that you would do maybe. is to just you know um walk them along what what you're talking about either tell them that hey converse um show demonstrate uh you know engage participate you know all of that and no more about how the other person thinks so the first thing that you and I are both going to have to do as an alien does come here is try and understand the alien you want to know how they think wait you want to know wait um, start yeah. this conversation with this is fantastic so if an alien came <laughs> down and hmm. try to understand art or yeah. a soap yeah what's the first thing we need to do we need to understand how to communicate it to them or we need to understand i would say yeah the first thing that you would need to do when alien comes to uh you and asks what art or a soap is is to try and understand how an alien thing so your first job is going to be to try and understand the alien you know you can't carry a prejudice and say oh ye alien hai it means that it is coming with this kind of thought to mujhe aise samjhana padega nahi no. you don't know anything yeah. nowhere in the entire scene should you ever assume that what you know is solid mm. uh, i guess the first act that you are actually really engaging in is thinking about uh, thinking about what you are thinking about and so you know the first thing that you want to do is understand who is it that you're going to be speaking to who is it that you um, how do they think what are they thinking what are they here looking for maybe the alien is not even asking you to explain art to them you're forcing it on them the alien doesn't care about art the alien is not even asking the question you are just standing there saying oh you're an alien you don't understand this let me tell you say you know so yeah so you wait uh, for you wait for cues from the other person to kind of show interest and intrigue and then when the person is hungry you kind of like you say the, you say the right thing that's called you could do that you could do that or you collaborate i feel like or you collaborate or just engage you know a lot of times we want to reach the end objective before we even decide to play together yeah uh, so it's like we should be hanging out yeah. like the alien and us if i have to continue that metaphor yeah uh we should be hanging out because eventually we would want to understand these these things and we can share with each other but before even deciding all of that on paper yeah. you just sit and watch what's happening observation is something that 
I mean, I know I might be biased as an ethnographer, but the first thing you have to do, forget everything you know and observe what is happening. And uh, then you can figure out, okay, if this is what I've observed, yeah. then you can question that. Can I even think about selling artwork here or should I just educate about it? Can yeah. I sell artwork here or should I help the other person through my artwork? My artwork can help them in such and such a way. Should I sell it? So it doesn't have to be just that one objective, just because, I mean, I understand that you yeah. want to learn how businesses work, but uh, there is a there is a diversity of objective everywhere as well. Fair enough. Why do you think artists are not already branding themselves? Because they what be- you said right now yeah. is what they're thinking about how they're different. They're thinking about how to engage with the context. They're thinking about how my value is different from a brand. So I'm an artist, so hence... As an artist, I am these things, but as an artist, I am not these things also. Yeah. So, no, I, is I, it fair to say that no, there's I'm already saying, a brand? I'm saying that the artists are allowing others to brand them more strong, more in, with more intensity than they themselves, understanding that they can brand themselves in different ways. They wait for, you know, they, 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 it's institutionalized. You'll wait for a photographer to photograph you a certain way because a corporate wants to sell CDs. So mm-hmm. you need to, you need to go down that route to kind of, mm-hmm. you know, you need to make a music video. You need to kind of like, or an artist needs to, you know, get a good photographer to photograph your works. It needs to be in a mm-hmm. gallery, you know. Why can't I show my artworks in my own studio? Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. that's where the artwork was made. You know, why, mm-hmm. why, why change its location? Yeah. So there are so many questions like that 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 need to be answered mm-hmm. in terms of an on you know maybe an artist wants to brand themselves differently but the system doesn't mm-hmm. you know the, the ecosystem doesn't allow you to get out of uh, it doesn't allow you to uh, can you imagine how free artists are they they want to still break away even though they are so free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean. Um, I, I wouldn't want to think that there is no value in the fact that artists have been doing that so far. If they could break away, they would break away. Yeah. Do you think that there could be value in just, you know, um, protecting or preserving the bubble of the artist and not going down about branding yourself, seeking value in terms of monetary gains? Like, is there... What happens if it continues like this? You see more of your friends getting out of the field. Is that yeah. the fear? Yeah, of course. There's not enough opportunity. Right. There's not enough okay. opportunity for, and there's there's a lot of talent getting wasted. That's the, the that's the mm-hmm. problem. The problem is that the in the you know I care about the Indian art somewhere, the Indian contemporary art scene. I see a lot of mm-hmm. I I see a lot of high quality content coming out there, but then it mm-hmm. it fades away because it's mm-hmm. it's 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 made to it's made to it's made in a way where the artist feels like it's not this is not sustainable for themselves mm-hmm. to grow the, to raise themselves up in a mature accept, yeah. acceptable tax paying mm-hmm. individual who can mm-hmm. get a life insurance who can kind of have safety you know, you can have your choice. You can have you want to work, not work on a Sunday. You don't want to go to office. That's okay. That's very that's a very romantic idea of how to live a life, but in a way, mm. you don't have you don't have power. Mm. You, know, you won't. I think, yeah. You won't be financially independent. You won't be you won't be bold in the mind, yeah. because you don't have stability. Basically, that's the that's the fundamental problem. That's why. Monetary. No, just stability, financial stability, confidence. You know, and that mm-hmm. finances has a huge thing to do with it. The reason I'm having this chat with you about why to, how can you help artists think more professionally as a brand and you know as business, mm-hmm. is for stability, right? That's the core question. That's it's like where, mm-hmm. once they realize that there is a that they're not taking themselves that serious. You can operate in the hobby space for your whole life. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not. I'm not even thinking about it that way. I'm thinking about it as a professional the way a doctor would look at their career. Would you say then like artists sort of inherently carry some form of insecurity because of this, which affects their work eventually, which affects how they eventually value their work. So is there such a thing as an artist who does not get perturbed by financial instability 
and still sees the core value of their work increasing day by day despite it yeah. you know assuming yeah. that it's not at the center of this whole thing it's a side factor that does affect your everyday life in terms of how you live it yeah um is do you think that artists personal value of their work is affected because of this lack of monetary stability yeah sure because honestly speaking businesses i don't think they will survive if there's no creative potential so the, an artist a graphic designer an illustrator a musician and all of that the i mean this is the cohort that is doing the emotional connect work with the audience with the yeah. consumers with the masses yeah. so without that there is no business that would reach where it has it's just that it's easy for a business to um pitch value against a currency that they have created and the lack of currency in the creative industries by currency i mean you know uh, what money is to a business what is that what is that um, entity to a, to a creative profession yeah um the moment you figure that out it's going to be an equalized game so business has to leverage the fact that yeah. we want to make profits we want to balance out and we want to not spend as much and we want to ensure that we all make money so don't give it i mean why not take it from the people who anyway don't value their work or anyway feel less and less motivated the less and less we pay them you know yeah. so yeah. it's not I, i don't i don't think you should assume that uh, i mean we yeah. should assume that fair enough there isn't a dark side to this you know this is a backside to this after speaking yes. to you yeah. i started after speaking to you i have a feeling that i have a very negative attitude about the arts am i right would you say that i'm doing a my attitude is a problem that i have a problem with my in my attitude i should think of this differently i feel like maybe you're thinking about one aspect of it like you said earlier that you know there are there's a lot of success in this field also which I mean I see it in yeah. equal measure I'm an outsider to the to the industry but I see it in equal measure I see a lot of successful artists and then there are people who are struggling but there is no other domain in which I don't see that so negative view of the art world perhaps you are look I don't know are you looking in one direction like I don't I don't know if that's I mean, maybe it's not negative I wouldn't say it's negative yeah, yeah. but there's a whole lot of other stuff that you can perhaps I understand you're saying there are, there there's there are there are winners and losers in every sector yeah no is that not true that's true actually i ha- i do have a bias <laughs> you you made me realize how um maybe immature my thought is i might be wrong as well i'm i'm just no, seeing no, you're this right, from you're right like you're right you're right you're right you're right you're right yeah. you're right so the reason why the creative industry is undervalued is because at least from my perspective and speaking to uh, many people is that if things are kept on a pedestal people are going to not want to engage with them because they think if they are not going to understand them it's not of value to them right that is and we do that that is a fantastic yeah. observation so, so i feel like maybe the artist yeah can maybe instead of thinking about how do i become a business yeah maybe they can independently think of creating systems by which they engage without having those anxieties and insecurities i mean they're very justified i'm not saying that uh, none of this is justified but there is some level of rigidity perhaps there and i'm just telling you like a formula that a lot of people use to just engage yeah, yeah. the moment the common person for example understands that that idea of art is down from a pedestal yeah uh, and understands they create the value and you have helped them create the value so the creative individual no longer has to be undervalued because now everybody is on the same page everybody's valuing them the same yeah. wow you know what i mean like this is just this is like we we tip of the iceberg there's a lot no, in terms helps. of no it helps it helps how do you simplify yeah if everybody knows what's, what 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 the processes are of making an artwork or of making a piece of music the value would yeah. go up if you simplify the hows yeah. of what is the process yeah. you're right about that if if everybody knows what how much time i spend on this edit they they would pay for it <laughs> if they yeah. know yeah how much how much do people really know about what goes on to create an artwork people just assume it's some highbrow stuff and then yeah. you expect highbrow to have value it's only going to have value for your jaguar uncle yeah. you know it's not going to have because he doesn't need to do anything else to like you know so uh, to yeah. to spend time he wants to be challenged and he's overcome everything else in life so 
and and right now we're talking about simplification because that's a probe that you gave me yeah but somebody else would think of i would have to maybe relate i would have to empathize i would have to um you know do some some other act you said simplification and and there are many ideas out there so what we do eventually for a business if you were a brand or if art was a brand to hype up that value or like create that value yeah. is to take all of these different ideas of what would it take for art to be valuable yeah and try and then sit in that room and analyze and think about it and yeah. you know come up with solutions to doing that and it's a very it's baby steps process it's not something that happens like true you know it's true. yeah so so it's just i mean this is just one construct was, of how to think about it that was yeah. a very short one but i think it was like it was interesting would you do this with me privately later <laughs> it was really good yes sure <laughs> like no it was yeah, it was go. good because i kind of i kind of realized something about myself in this in this podcast i realized my shortcomings i realized how wrong i was in thinking you know i was being the victim i was getting i was romanticizing the fact that the art sector needs to be victimized and that as an artist mm-hmm. i'm bullied and victimized i i in a way need to mm-hmm. i need to s- s- step up my game man it's like and i can it's not it's just i've just been yeah yeah step up your game i would say is that one thing and this is true for everybody is it, and is step you, up your sure game is step right up now. your game to corporate <laughs> what I you, don't know. what's the way i need yeah to, no it's really not it's I really not because my brush. No. i need to clean my palette <laughs> yeah because you know like um it just requires you to be less um, i mean i know the the environment makes you makes everybody insecure i'm insecure about a lot of things in yeah. my field of work yeah because the environment has not given me the security yeah but uh, the moment you get the security to be like let's try this that experimental yeah. courage yeah. you know yeah is is how anybody thrives and i feel like an artist is in such a great position to do that is because if anybody should be fearless it should be an artist because you know you're not bound in many ways you're not uh, bound by ideology you're not bound by industrial structure apart from the monetary value bit um so you are in a great place to really just go out there with that kind of courage yeah uh, to just you know try a couple of things try to get that thing down from the pedestal without having to dumb down without having to simplify or say i'm losing so much in this act of i have trying to complete the movie yeah is there something that the artist is there something artists should be happy for the way they are like is there something that artists What? are missing when because they don't relate themselves with the with corporates that much so is there something mm-hmm. that they are overlooking here in terms of what they actually represent mm-hmm. or maybe what are the what what do they represent i don't even know how to fucking ask this question properly i mean i get it um it's like i i i find that question so I, you as an artist i feel very envious towards you to in in many different ways if i had to like no, pinpoint it yeah it's go on that's it yeah. yeah yeah so what does an artist have that say somebody who's working in business doesn't have the they definitely have freedom of ideology i know maybe if there's no value out there there's a diminishing idea of that freedom how much freedom do i really have if i don't have financial stability is a fair question yeah but it doesn't have to undervalue your work just because you don't have that financial stability today maybe your work gains value rather than loses it just because some people are paying you for it that's true the second thing that artists have that everybody is envious of is choice you you choose to do something you don't choose to do it in terms of days it's freedom with what you would want to do with your time it's ownership over self actually that is you, true you you work you want to and you know stuff like that there's also a lot of the idea the fun of just thinking about something and then putting all your blood sweat and tears into making it happen and seeing it become a creation in front of you yeah it's like it's what human potential thrives on it's 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 something that every human being on the planet is naturally inclined to want to do just think of something create it with their bare hands create it conceptually make it you know see it sort of coming alive in front of them and people work in business yeah they do that in many different ways but 
their motivation is not always as pure as to just see an object for the sake of what it is rather than say oh what does this mean for me it means i'm rich it means i'm growing it means i'm famous you're not bogged down by all of that like you're just you know a bit chill yeah then there's it's it's like i mean if you think about it an artist has like i i spoke about need gaps that businesses have so you're very rigidly looking at or oh, what is not being done in the market you're very rigidly stuck to a structure um but yeah. what i find super interesting is that an artist has a white canvas everywhere you know there is the lack of a structure is you mean blank is, you mean blank uh, canvas blank canvas yes I, i i mean that an artist has a blank canvas all around them yeah because you're not sticking to a structure you don't want to be so rigid you want to create something new all the time yeah so you can think unthought of thoughts you know you you can yeah. think unthinkable thoughts also yeah. and that's okay that's that that is justified because you're an artist that's like the true definition of what freedom really means it's like also, on a, on your day yeah, also, you'll be happier <laughs> we also create you know? cultural capital you know the amount of money brought in yeah. just because of the eiffel tower in paris uh yeah. you know from mementos i mean the kind of billions of dollars that you can generate from artistic activities yeah. is yeah i i don't know if someone's actually i'm sure somebody's calculated the 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 value to that i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure too yeah and and it's like it's it's you don't have to think about it. the lack of a template can really be a very very fortunate thing sometimes mm-hmm. yes it leaves you in the dark and it leaves you confused and you have no idea and you're very uncomfortable but what else are you here to do on planet earth but not feel like the full gamut of human emotions so you're not here to like drink wine and watch netflix right so you are here to be uncomfortable with some stuff so uh Ex- so explain so, that to yeah. that alien <laughs> <laughs> yeah how would you do it i would ask you how would you do it yeah. you can get one of your two characters to do it as well like how would the how would your art in different person you had to give them a name but you didn't. yeah no it's okay so uh, how would, perfect thank you so much for doing this and uh, you. can you please you. you can say no to this but can you look yeah. into the camera and ask people to subscribe to art history plus in whatever way you want to do it right you want to ask them 50 questions you can why haven't you subscribed yet you know what does yeah. subscription mean to you do you know that it's free you can ask anything yeah. you go for it okay <laughs> for those of you For those of you who haven't yet subscribed to Artistry Plus, please do so. Um, yeah, that's no, it. Sorry, that's. <laughs> please like, share, and subscribe to Artistry Plus. <laughs> Now it's gone. Now it's like <laughs> perfect. Perfect. That was a good take. <laughs>